Live from the Gorgeous Prince Georges. This is the Shattered Illusions <laughs> Podcast. See why I got with his headphones on. It's cool, man. We're gonna roll with it. We, and we got a very special guest tonight. But before we do that, gotta check in on the family as always. Oliver Fortune, how you doing, bro? Hey man, alive and kicking, man. About to have a good show for you guys tonight. Let's get it. D, the man behind the camera, who's normally in front of the camera. How you doing, bro? I'm good, God is good. All the time. So a couple housekeeper things before we start, guys. Again, follow us on Instagram and TikTok. And if you guys want to get on the show, if you can provide some kind of value for us and Shattered, Shattered Illusions, go ahead and hop on. Because as Oliver always says, you better get on now before we blow up. Yes, sir. So if you can bring bring value to us and our listeners, go ahead and hit us up. And the most important part, ladies, if you're in the DMV or even outside the DMV, if you want to come on and get some of this smoke, let us know. Hit us, up, hit us up on Instagram or hit up one of the team members. So without further ado, I got a very special guest tonight. Yo, yo. A dude that I've known for probably five or six years, but this is our first time really sitting down talking. Dude's a celebrity trainer, entrepreneur, has a good fitness brand, just all around hard work and dude. And I want to give the platform to people that I feel can actually bring value to our guys and help them out. So without further ado, I want to introduce my man Chris Martin. What's going on? AKA What's up? What's up? C Marty. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. AKA Mr. Let's Brunch is more crunches. Yes, sir. Let's take yes, sir. it to the cranky. Yes, 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 What's going on? What's going C. on? C Marty, bro. How you feeling? I'm, I'm good, man. I can't complain. I'm blessed. You know. Uh, thank you for doing this, bro. I know that you could be out running the streets, out making some <laughs> money, out training thank somebody. You for me, man. But you in here with us, bro. And I appreciate that for real. I mean, um, always say i want to give people their flowers while they can smell them man so uh i see you working good dude bro and i really appreciate you being here with us thank you for having me bro hey, anytime bro so just real quick before we start can you tell the people who you are what you do and all that good stuff yep uh my name is chris martin uh known as c marty fit uh fitness brand is uh less brunches more crunches and i'm a personal trainer so um you know i train at gold's gym richie station uh, former Division One basketball player, and uh, I kind of got my uh, got into fitness, you know, through my basketball background. Uh, kind of led me into training. So um, I'm I'll be six years in the game in March. Woo! So yeah, <laughs> man. So I've seen a lot of trainers and go come and go um, in the six years. So bro, don't, it's a blessing to still be. Gotta there, give a hand clap to that. Don't don't get me started, bro. And I'm going to go ahead and give you a lot of people. Man. Go. Don't get me started, bro. Cause like. I've been training myself for about 12 years and uh, pretty much at the same gym and everything. And the amount of people that I, I've seen come and go just, you know, just training. Yeah. I can only imagine what you've seen, bro, because I've gone through probably, I don't know, shit, 10 to 15 different workout partners in the 12 years. People come in That's one day. True. I've, I've actually seen that. I've, <laughs> I've seen your workout partners. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I got, I got, I got a good, I got a good bunch right now. Shout out to my fam, uh, Unc. Fred, Thomas, all y'all, man. Yeah, I've been going strong for a minute. So. Yeah, hell yeah, bro. Yeah. So, I mean, I've seen you, bro. Like, you started from not having that many clients. So, I mean, you had a you had a good consistent two or three. But now you got shit. I don't know. Every time I see you, you're busy now, bro. I mean, yeah. you get your little probably hour lunch break. But for the most part, when I see you, you always training somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, before we even get into that, man, I kind of want to go back and start from the genesis of C Marty Fit to, like, where you were to how you got where you are right now. So mm. let's talk about more about that that D1 basketball. Where'd you play at? Uh, so I played at Marshall, Mount St. Mary's, and Savannah State. Um, all D, well, all D1 schools, uh, Savannah State's D2 now, but they were D1 when I went there. So, um, you know, uh, a lot of transferring. So I'm pretty pretty used to adapting to new environments. And, sure. Um, I take on adversity, you know, you know, I look it in the eye, like, let's, let's get it. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so yes, sir. the way I wanted to start it, like I said, and for people who don't know, uh, all C Marty's links will be down below in the description. But when I was watching a documentary, let's talk about this coach, man. Since we're shattering illusions, let's talk about, let's shatter the illusions of C Marty fit a little bit here, man. Let's talk about this coach that doubted you up in Marshall. You mind telling that story again to the people? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think the story TK's referring to was just uh, we were in the conference semifinals uh, when I was at Marshall. We were playing against Tulsa. 
Um, and at the time, they had Jordan Clarkson, who's, who's currently on the Utah Jazz. If you, if you watch the NBA, you know he's a bucket. So uh, he actually he was torching us that game. And, um, you know, I hadn't been in a game, and we went to triple overtime. And, um, you know, all the senior guards, all the upperclassmen fouled out. So coach had to put me in the game. So, uh, um, you know, I'm running to the to the scores table to check in, and uh, one of the assistant coaches stopped me. He said, um, hey, look, I, I, don't, I don't give a fuck what play they call. If you open, shoot that motherfucker. So <laughs> straight like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and just my mindset, like I'm 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 the wrong dude, but I'm the right dude to tell that to you, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So um we get in the game. I mean, I get in the game, we get the ball, you know, time's running down, coach drew up a play, and um, you know, I caught it. The play was not for me. I caught it and the dude was was he was he was lacking, you know, he's he giving me too much space. You know, I really felt disrespected. So, you know what I'm saying? So I shot it, you know, it went in, game winner. And like, you know, the whole bench went crazy. Everybody was celebrating. Everybody jumping down, jumping up and down. And my coach was just sitting there in shock. Like, like he couldn't believe that I made the game winning shot, you know? So, um, you didn't run my play. That's what I'm saying. Run like, my play. yeah, he wanted, he wanted it done his way, but we did it his way. We probably have been going home. So, you know, we get to the post game interview and they're they're asking him like you know how do you feel about Chris hitting the shot you know he hasn't gotten a lot of minutes this year um, he didn't play the whole game he was like yeah uh, that was a bad shot um, it's not the it's not the, the play we drew up you know if if he if he missed it it would have been really bad and it's like bro like you know what I'm saying you, so, you know the craziest part about that you can critique a coach can critique you in front of the media right if you did the same thing to the coach. Oh yeah, you, you you know oh, that that's right. terrible. That's you know, you know right. he could he could have easily he could have easily said yeah that was a you know good shot and corrected you later. That's true. Yeah, off camera. Yeah, yeah. he didn't have to put that out there like to the whole for the whole country to see because you said it was on CBS Sports. CBS Sports. Right? Yeah. yeah, like that, you know, yeah, it's not. And time. see, I think that's a bad leader because, for example, if you're the coach and you're a leader of an organization, you have to go ahead and praise your people in in, in public. But you critique him like you were saying in private. He could have pulled you to the side and say, oh, yeah. hey, you know what? Hey, um, glad you made the shot, but we didn't draw that play up. Now, I would have respected that a lot more, but in my opinion, that's some whole shit. Oh, yeah. Facts. Yeah. So a lot of co- a lot of college coaches be on that type of time. So. Yeah. And like I said, playing that was advocate. We all know that as a coach or general manager of anything, if anything, you, you do have to maintain some type of control. But in that type of situation, conference championship, like you said. This is one and done. I mean, you would have been going home. So it's like the fact that we even advancing. Hey, fuck it, man. We can talk about all that other shit later. You know what I'm and I'm, I'm gonna be real too. Most most college coaches just playing in college and just meeting coaches in the past. They gotta have some type of arrogance to them, man. That's yeah, just what it is. That's man. true. Mm-hmm. So so, see, Mario, do you think that? It, do you think he really was mad about the play, or he's mad at the fact that you took the shot? I think he like. So a lot of college coaches they want to win, but they want to win their way. Right. So I think. The fact that we won, but we didn't win the way he wanted to win is what he was upset about. And that's that makes sense. That's just so freaking yeah, you, crazy you know to me. And like I said, me and TK was talking about that earlier this week. Just like, yo, it don't matter. The whole objective is a win. And I think that goes like what TK was saying is like that to me, that's still that's poor leadership. Because at yeah. the end of the day, it's about the team. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's about like advancing. It's not about, oh, we didn't do it my way. So let's just go home. Like, that's just stupid. But, see, that's that's any and any. You know, any field you went in, you know, whether that's that's even in the workforce. That's about to say the yeah. workforce, you know, job, family, whatever the fuck. It's not gonna be pretty. It's not gonna, you know, things ain't gonna be lined up perfectly. Yeah. A win is a win. Just a like win is a win. It's like the TikTok sound, a, a win is a win. So <laughs> it's a fact. It don't even matter. So when you when you're you're in your dorm or wherever you are at this moment and you hear the coach say that, what's going through your mind at that point? Are you upset? Are you angry? What are you thinking about yeah, when you're I'm, saying I'm very that? angry, very upset. Uh you know, because it's like, like I, I didn't have a normal childhood. Like I was, I dedicated my life to basketball. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I didn't really party in high school. I always had a tournament or a camp or something to go to, you know, from the time I was in third grade mm. my whole life. So to, to work that hard, to get the scholarship, to work even harder when you get to college and to, you know what I'm saying? Like you get some type, you get some type of success by hitting that game winner and that's what you hear you know it was really it really hurt me but 
um, you know, that shit turned me into a dog for real. So yeah, and I, really I think changed my mindset. I think you having that adversity probably kind of made you as successful as you are right now because I mean when you're going through things like that in the moment you don't want to hear that all oh, this is for a greater purpose is going to make you stronger but I think reflecting on it now you probably like man that that probably was a, like a turning point for you you don't think yeah it definitely was yeah so I mean me personally bro if I'd have heard that and that was my coach I would have been like you know what f this team I'm out yeah. So do you think that kind of played into the decision of you leaving and going somewhere else? Or? Yeah. And the game winner was your freshman year. Correct? Oh, my freshman year, yeah. And you stayed okay. two years. Yeah. Okay, okay. So yeah, so um I, I I did. That's what I tried to do. I tried to leave. They denied my release. And um, so I had to stay another year because you know, like at, I don't know what the rule is now, but at the time they can like, you know, deny your release. They they gotta accept it or or you know, deny it. Um, so I was forced to stay another year. I stayed there, uh, worked my butt off. You know, I had some good games. Like we played Villanova. Um, I had a good game. Uh, we I had good games against a couple teams, but uh, we played uh, Hofstra, and um, I had a good game that game too. But I ended up missing like a clutch free throw because my sophomore year was like my freshman year. So I, you know, I hadn't been uh, you know under too much pressure. Missed a clutch free throw. We lost the game, and then I pretty much ain't played that much the rest of the season. So um, that was it. And then when I wanted to transfer again, they kind of let me go. You know, they had they had other guards coming in, and um, I had a meeting with the coach, and we just you know just had a mutual agreement, decided to part ways. So hmm. yeah. Now let me now let's just take this back before we get to the next step. You think if you would have maybe possibly had chosen another coach, maybe that you were connected with, you think you would have did better in college? Definitely, man. And and it's it's uh it's really messed up because you know, coming out of high school, I was, you know, pretty heavily recruited on the mid-major level. I had like 40 mid-majors offer me. I had like 40 offers. And um I had one of my coaches from high school, you know, pretty much guiding me in the process. And um he's the one who guided me to Marshall, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of learned too, like, you know, as a man, you got to make your own decisions and do what's best for you. Cause I put my trust in this dude's hands. Right. You know what I'm saying? So and he, he guided me there. And then when I was going through all the bullshit, he kind of was like, you know, he didn't, he wasn't apologetic about it. He right. kind of just was worried about his current high school kids. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. And I mean, so, and, and I mean, you do have to, like I said, at the end of the day, you know, and, and and I'm pretty sure you know this. You know we all take responsibility as men, stuff like that. But I'm happy you said that because at the end of the day, man, you live and die, you know, of your decisions. And a lot of young yep. kids don't don't they may not realize that. Yep. You know, yeah. and you know, and you were just doing what you thought at the time. So you know what I'm so I want I want him, I want him to talk about something because uh, people don't know the recruiting process. Most people don't. So coaches come talk to your family, talk to you, and it sounds so great. It sounds so sweet. Of the things mm -hmm. they they tell you about that. Just talk about the culture shock or or just the just the shock period when you get on campus and it's not the same when they were in your living room or talking to your family, your parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, it, it's not the same. Uh, you know, they'll make everything sound sweet. Uh, they'll lie to you about, you know, uh, kids at your position coming in or they'll lie about you, lie to you about, you know, how much playing time you'll get. And um, that's kind of how Marshall got me. You know, they made it sound like I was going to be, you know, like a like a sixth man, a seventh man, and the whole time I get to school, they got dudes coming in I ain't even know about. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it was really and like, you wasn't and you wasn't even redshirted. Like you wasn't. No, I didn't even. I didn't. I didn't red shirt. Red shirt. So yeah. nope. so there's a there's a there's a fall for basketball. There's a fall signing period and a spring signing period. Okay. Fall signing period. That's when I had like the forty offers. That coach I just talked about. He was like, Nah, wait till the spring. Oh, yeah. So all them offers they was off the table. They yeah. took other recruits and um. So that kind of like, you know, messed me up. And he was like, yeah, you should go to Marshall. But, you know, back back to what I was saying, um, you get on campus and then uh, pretty much them coaches own you, bro. Like the way they talk to you sometimes, like if, if you ain't if you ain't built for that, you're you going to be calling home crying to mama, bro. Like I don't had coaches call me a bitch and I done damn near gotten fights with coaches because it's because of the way they was talking to me. But, um, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm cool with being – coached and being critiqued and you know when it comes to basketball but when you calling me outside of my name like that's just tough i wasn't used to that so um, wait the coaches call you outside of your name yeah, yeah bro yeah, yeah, yeah bro yeah, oh, yeah. it's a, yeah, it's a bro, mental it's aspect crazy, to that bro. it's it's crazy it's a bro. mental aspect to it man people it's know crazy. people see the physical aspect of you being an athlete but that mental aspect that that you build and like you said turned you into a dog almost the stuff that you face in sports 
people don't really realize the mental aspect of sports. That's yeah, because right. the, the coaches got the power for real. I mean, like, they could kick me out of school. They're not necessarily going to lose their job because they called me a bitch. <laughs> they called me a bitch and I retaliate and swing on one of them. Yeah, I'm getting kicked out. Now, you know let's, let's, let's play devil's advocate here. Do you think that when coaches are calling you a bitch or getting in your face and trying to, like, make you a little bit upset, do you think it's like a military kind of thing? Like, I'm going to break you down and build you up kind of thing? Or do you think it's malicious? So that's the thing. I'm cool if you building me back up. But, if you know what I'm saying? Like, if every interaction I have with you is negative, then it's, it's, it's to me, it's personal. Right. Because I've had, I've had, you know, tough coaches in my life that, that show that they they love the kids, they care about the kids. But I'm a but if you if you want some bullshit, I'm gonna let you know. Right. But some of them college coaches, it was like every interaction was negative, and I just yeah. you know what I'm saying I really wasn't feeling that. On top of the, it's, it's I'm here, and it's not what you recruited me on. The it's, lack of promises, you, the lack of playing right. time, the shit you promised exactly. was, not, was not what. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You had my mom up here on campus lying mm-hmm. to her face. It's, it ain't lying to me. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Yeah, and a kid, and a crazy thing, and the, the thing with you, people can always tell between negativity and you know constructive criticism is if the person says something negative, like okay, call you a bitch or something like that. But look, next time, just go to your left instead of your right. You know what I'm saying? They give you some type of something right, you right. can feed off of. Yeah. But if it's just straight negative, nah, you a bitch, bitch, bitch. Nah, it's crazy. Nah, right. <laughs> that's that's not constructive. That's yeah. just straight, just toxic. Yeah. So do you think that there was a lot of politics and and uh? College basketball, yeah, most like, definitely, yeah, yeah. most definitely politics, bro. Most definitely. Give us a couple of examples of that. What do you mean? Um, like, you'll have a coach where he might be, he might be scared of a player. You know what I'm saying? Like, so if a, if a coach can, a coach can critique me, coach me, yell at me, cuss me out, and I'm gonna respond positively. All right, coach, I got you. But another player, you know what I'm saying? This dude might, he might skip class. He might be late to practice. He might be late for the team bus where the team almost missed the flight. But the dude going to cuss the coach out anytime the coach critique him or respond. That dude's going to play. That dude gets playing time because coach is scared of him. You know what I'm saying? Like, that right there, that's that's wild to me. And then I was even – one time I had – when I was at – I don't want to say what school. <laughs> but I had a 20-point game, and um, I was going to meet with the coach. And uh, he didn't know I was outside of his office. So one of the um, one of the I'm just gonna say a booster. I don't want to say who the guy was. Let's just say a booster was in the office talking to him. I'm right outside the office. He don't know. He was like, "Hey, you know, uh, Chris Martin had a great game last night. Is he gonna start?" The coach was like, "Fuck no, Chris ain't starting this game." And you heard him say this. I heard him say that, bro. I heard th- I heard this shit, bro. I heard it. So and it didn't matter how good you played. It he didn't still matter, he had his guys, bro. It didn't matter. It didn't matter, bro. And then like even at one school. I don't give a fuck. And when I was at Mount St. Mary's. Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Hold on. <laughs> Back. Bro, no bullshit. When I was at Mount St. Mary's, bro, I had a game. I had 22 off the bench in the first half. Damn. In the first half, bro. Right. That was on a I'll, I'll never forget this shit. That was on a Saturday. We played that Monday. We lost. That following Saturday, after the, after the Monday loss, coach made a decision to – Bench me for the rest of the season, bro. The rest of the no bullshit. The rest of the season. What, what was his reasoning? Didn't tell me. Like no playing time. No, no all he that. said was the team we want to go in another direction. That's cap. Hard. Literally. And like at the time, my dad, my, my parents been separated my whole life. Long, I'm, long story short, my dad played at Georgetown, won a national championship with Coach Thompson. So oh, like every coach I, I know, they know my dad. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, so. My dad at the time was living in Georgia and he drove up to the game. And so, you know, I got to send in a ticket list to get my family tickets. So the, that motherfucker knew my dad was coming to the game and bench me that game and then decided to bench me the rest of the season. And mind you, this was like my probably my, you know, six, seven, 25 point game that season. Hey, hey, hold on. You just said something historic. I don't know if they Damn. caught it. So your pops played with Patrick Ewing? I was about yeah, to yeah, hold that. Yeah, he played with Patrick Ewing. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's, that's, good. that's cool. Reggie Jackson. Yeah. That's what's up, bro. Yeah, that's all right, man. Yeah, man. But, uh, you know, that's that's kind of partly why we started Shattered Illusions. That's kind of what's in the name, bro. Like, I just kind of feel like it's a lot of bullshit going on in society, man. It's just like the talented people aren't really getting – notice anymore it's more about your social media following the clout your instagram i'm not saying those things can be good things to have but 
I believe the person that works the hardest and does the job the most effectively should get, you know, playing time or in your case or whatever the case is. But now it's not about that anymore. It's just people like if you're if you're famous, you got somebody playing favorites with you, you're get you're getting the job. You'll get you're getting the starting spot now. And I don't like things like that, bro. That's yeah. why I can't really mess with society. And like it's all about anymore. who's the favorite and stuff. And, and like I said, at the end of the day, it is what it is. You know, you just adjust, but at the same time, it's like it's crazy. You know me, I've been around, been in the government, been in the school system, been been in the fitness industry. Like, bro, it's it's everywhere. It's yeah. ever you can never get away from it. And like you said, it's even in sports too. And it's just it's unfortunate that the best people really don't get their flowers, they don't get their shine, you know, because yeah. they get overlooked to something as little as just a coach just not liking you or some shit like that's just Crazy, that's bro. just some fucking whole shit so see mar let's have a little bit of fun with this if you could do it all over again better yet if you have a kid let's say he's like 17 years old 18 year old years old about to play college basketball mm-hmm. what would you advise him to do based on based upon your experiences like how would you tell him and guide him to not make the mistakes that you made in the past yeah i would just tell him to go to the school um where he feels like they love him the most right you know what i mean like because uh Sometimes the school might pop out of nowhere and they just recruiting you because they don't they heard another school in their conference was recruiting you. You know right. what I'm saying? Like they did mm. they don't want that school to get you, so they just gonna come get you. So wherever you love the most, wherever they, you know, they they're the most consistent, the ones that's calling you, texting you the most. And then let's say, you know, my kid blew up that summer. Say he had a you know a A10 school recruiting him. He blew up. Now you got ACC schools. You might want to be careful. You might go to them ACC schools. They might have another dude coming in. Yeah. You might want to rock with the A10 school. It might yeah. not be the sexiest name, but that might them be. Them people that was with you off the exactly. gate. Exactly. Yeah. Because, right. I mean, you look now, Dame Lillard, Steph Curry. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's John Morant. It's so many people who went to mid-majors and blew up. Right. And now they NBA superstars. So. Yeah. yeah. Man, that's facts, bro. So where'd you end your college career at? career at what school signed it at savannah state in okay mm-hmm. so let's go ahead and run through that so you're done with savannah state you graduated what was the steps that got you into fitness how did you start like working the fitness and everything so when i was done savannah state um i wanted to uh you know go overseas so i had multiple agents i had multiple contract offers that were straight bullshit. Uh, <laughs> agents was on straight bullshit. so i wanted to just uh, keep myself in shape to stay ready for an opportunity i went to combines for the national Canada league that was bullshit so uh, reality's hitting me like bro I don't think this overseas thing is happening bro so um I kept myself in shape I got me um a front desk job at Gold's and I did that for nine months and um you know as I was working out some of the personal trainers in the gym they wanted me to join the personal trainer staff so they got me a certification for 150 dollars cool Usually them run for like, you know, 800, 1,000. So I got a, a nice discount. So I failed the test the first time because I didn't really take it serious. I, I thought I was going to get um, some basketball stuff overseas. Didn't happen. So when I actually buckled down and studied, passed it, and I told the um, people that goes, I'm not working with y'all. I'm going to do my own thing. And uh, so that's kind of how I got it going. And let's just be clear. So it's like you have some <clears throat> people that actually work for the gym when it comes to PT, and you right. just went straight in independent I contracting. Went, yeah. Bang, I'm going to pay you yep. rent, and I'm just going to get my own clients yep. straight there on my own. Yeah, I went straight okay. in the independent. Um, at the time, I was living at home with my mom, so I really didn't have, you know, um, I didn't have a lot of bills. I didn't have any significant overhead or any, or any responsibilities, so I went straight into it. And how old were you at the time? That was when I was uh, 23. 23? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And that's that's actually really interesting, bro. And, like, because I, I told you, I've seen you from, like, you just starting out to now. So um, how did you kind of get through those initial days of not having, you know, clients and things like that? Because I'm going to just pop it back to this podcast, bro. Like, uh, Oliver and Dee would tell you, we spend a lot of time down here trying to set everything up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as far as getting the equipment together, editing videos, posting them getting the captions, clipping them, bro. That's a lot of hard work for not really good results. Yep. And the reason that people don't really even stick with the gym a lot of the times because it's not an instant gratification game. Yep. You can go into the gym for, let's say, six six or seven months. You ain't going to see shit sometimes. Yep. It could be a diet. It could be your sleep. Wrong training could, program. It could be a lot of different things. Most people in the society that we live in right now, they can't handle not having something in five minutes. So what kind of kept you 
those initial days of you not having clients, what was your mindset like <clears throat> and what kept you going to keep to get where you're at now? Uh, so one thing that helped was like me playing sports my whole life. And um, when I like like days I wouldn't play, uh, days I would days I wouldn't get in get in the game. I would roll out the shooting gun and, and shoot just because I didn't want to miss reps. I didn't want to miss any action. I didn't want to not be conditioned anymore. Right. So I I knew if I uh, just small things like I knew if I could just keep going, uh, you know, stay with it, I'll end up hitting a game winning shot when the team needs yeah, everybody file out. So I already had that mindset of. You might not see it today. You'll see it, you know, at some point. That hard work never going to go to waste. So I knew on them days when I was like, you know, just I might have had two or three clients in the week. I might have made seventy five dollars that week, but I knew, you know, if I could stick with it, I'll be fine. And then I also like, you know, no shade to nobody. Like I got a way of hyping myself up and talking to myself like, this motherfucker, this trainer not better than me. Bro. Fact, there you bro. go. Like, Fact. yeah, this Nick, bro, this he got clients all day. This motherfucker, it ain't no way he's at this point, and I can't get to this point. Facts. Like, I'm a D1 athlete. I've been doing this shit, bro. Tell like, him, talk your no, shit. No, I, talk I, your I, shit, I definitely talk my shit to myself. Like, I've been doing this, bro. Like, stay with it, 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 stay with it. And shit, some of them trainers fell off. And then, like, I remember one time it was this one lady. She saw me in the gym training. She was like, "Hey, I really need some help." Um, but I need you to train me at 4 a.m. I was like, huh? She's like, yeah, I need you to train me at 4 a.m. I was like, you mean start at 4 a.m.? She's like, yeah. She's like, you train me at 4 a.m., I'm going to bring my friend. And uh, we, we'll both train with you at 4. So then you're looking at, you know, instead of $25 an hour, now I'm going to get 50 an hour. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I said, fuck it. I did it. Damn, you just dropped so many jets. <laughs> no, yo, I just want to cover two things real quick, bro. That shit was dope because at the end of the day, like, Sometimes you got to take the opportunity when it comes. And just nice. the fact you didn't bitch out and say, man, 4 a.m., I ain't up right there. Nah, bro. If yeah. that's where the money coming in, she bringing in the friend, that's what the opportunity is, you fucking take it. And yep. even when you was down, you know what I'm saying, in school and shit, coach shit wasn't going your way, things was going bad, you still was like, nah, take out shooting shit, keep shooting, keep, keep shooting, shooting. my day is coming. Keep that shooting. just stays to a test of, like D said earlier, having endurance and even when shit ain't going your way, keep persisting, just keep going, don't yeah. quit. A lot of people in that situation, in both situations, would just say, "Fuck it, I'm done." But you, you know, but you know, you know what happened a lot of the times uh, we don't realize, like, like right, like you said, when you were in school, you had that, you kept going. You might not see your promotion there, even if people are on jobs. You keep doing what you do, right? You, you whatever you're learning or whatever you're taking in, right there, your promotion, your growth might not come there; it might come somewhere else. But guess what? You're gonna be prepared for it. Facts. Yeah, that shit could be preparing you for something in a completely different organized That's anything. Right. Yeah, it's true. But I think you did a good job too, bro. Because like what you did, you don't even realize what you did with that. Because once you kind of go ahead and you do good with those two girls, they going to talk and be like, "Hey, you know, I got a good training right here. You know, a good dude works out with me, works with my schedule." They gonna start talking. It's the word of mouth. That's the oldest. That's the oldest form of advertising. The word King of mouth. King Solomon, brother. And so then, go ahead. And the crazy part about it is too. Once you train your body to get up at four a.m., now you got more time in the day. So clients want to come in at. You think you could do it five, six up? Hey, come on in. I'll be up early till this day, bro. <laughs> Shit, man. I'm telling you, bro. You be, be killing you on the weekend, huh? When nobody, when you ain't got to do nothing. Fact. Well, I, I mean, I go back to sleep on the weekend. Bro. Okay, okay. But I told you, I mean. I, I I dabbled and dabbled in personal training for a little bit, and I told you it's it's not for me because I'm at a point in my life where like I'm like you either want it or you don't. I don't got time for a bunch of bullshit, no, a bunch of excuses like oh you know you you eating bad today or at least unrealistic expectations of you getting your body right in two or three weeks. Man, I don't got time for it. And but the one thing I have learned is that when people hire a personal trainer, it's not they necessarily want to get fit. A lot of people just want a friend to talk to, man. I'm, t I'm, t I'm telling you, bro. Fucking therapist. Listen, man. I know, I, I know so much shit. Like my, it's, it's, it's a blessing and a curse because, like, my view on like relationships and marriage, bro. We gonna get into it, bro. Like, we gonna get into I, it. I, I literally see that shit. Like, this shit is crazy, bro. Like, one time I, I know this is a little off topic, but nah, go ahead, bro. but not nah, like your show, man. This, I hope any aspiring trainer, like, this the shit you got to deal with. I hope, I hope uh, aspiring trainers watching this, like. I had one dude, uh, I trained him and his wife, right? Oh, shit. Bro, the dude had, he asked me to train a side chick, too. Oh, no. So, <laughs> uh, so I'm like, look, I said, bro, look. And this this, this in my early days when I needed the brain, you feel me? So I'm like, look, bro, 
I need, I definitely need the bread, but look, I don't look, you got to make sure the schedule is right. Like that's on you. Cause if they run into each other, that shit don't got nothing to do with me. I don't know <laughs> nothing, bro. I don't know shit. So this nigga was, yeah, he had me trained. Like he, his, his, his wife would come in. Nah. He might, nah. He, he might, he might, look, look, this nigga was wild, bro. He might come in, check on his wife while she working out. He coming to do his workout. Then I train the side chick. He coming in when the side chick workout. Like it's wild, bro. Same guy the binoculars looking in the cut corner bro. and shit. Like what the fuck going on? Yeah. So they, <laughs> where, my, uh, where my hoe at? You know, I mean, the wife got a divorce. Oh, didn't see that one coming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, and him and the side chick together now. They got a fight together. Captain bro. obvious. Hey, 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 side chicks, play your role. You never know when your day will come, bro. That what? shit crazy, bro. Like. I wonder in the back of her mind, she's like, I knew this nigga knew about that. <laughs> but you, but, but you wanna know what? Yo, I had a video on YouTube that was like my most popular video. It was called Top Five Red Pill Books, real quick, right? Mm-hmm. And the re- one of the books that I put on there, a lot of people disagree with me, was Brittany Renner's book. Uh huh. And she said I something agree. just like that, just like that when she was saying when she was dealing with this dude, he was a D one basketball player, and she was playing the side chick for a little bit, and you know, his his girl would go home, you know, what I'm saying for Christmas, she spend time with him, but. She held that fucking pocket and she ended up being the main joint. And girls be thinking like that. They be thinking like that. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. I've done some wild things in my days. <laughs> I, I really have. But y'all didn't see me pull one in and, and kick another one out. But I ain't never did nothing wild like that. Trade yeah, my size. I'm, I'm telling you, bro. Yeah, yeah. But nah, I, I've, I've seen a lot of wild stuff. Like, I know, like, it might be a. Hold, hold on, brother. Might... Hold on, hold on one second. So he said. <laughs> Train my side woman. How did how did that even conversation go? Yeah, that's actually a good question. Nah, he just he came up to me one day. He was like, "Yo," so he ain't tell me it was a side chick at first. He was like, "Yo, my coworker, you know, what I'm saying she trying to get right, this and that, this and that, da 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 da." And so he came in one day while I was training her, and I saw the interaction. It wasn't no coworker interaction, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, hey, bro, what's going on? Because I train your wife, bro. So I need to know what's going on, bro. Like, no cap. I don't want no shit. I don't, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. And you know, both them bitches quit. Now I'm out of clients. <laughs> and they they fighting or some shit. Yeah. Just, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need that shit. They be like, ain't those your clients? Be like, man, like, I don't bro, know what hey, the listen, fuck is I, going on, I, bro. I'm just here to get paid, man. I don't want none of y'all extra BS yeah, on man. that stuff, man. So uh, do you do you do you train more dudes or more women? Way more women. It's not even close. How, how's that like, man? It's bro. <laughs> Let, let's let's it's get, crazy, bro. Let's like get to the bullshit. Like man. dudes, dudes would be like, "Hey, man, you uh, you you mess with such and such," and I'm like, "Who? Like you mess with such?" And I'm like, "Nah, bro." And they be like, "Man, she bad." Da da da. Whole time, like dudes be geeking, but I see the real her in the training session. Exactly. I they see the real her. I'm like, I would not talk to her, bro. Like, it's no bro, way. I'm like, don't get yo, it. Bro. Shoot your shot, bro. You go ahead. Wait, hold on, shot. hold on. I'm gonna tell you this though. I agree with what you're saying, it's but see, Mod, you you do you do train some badass chicks. I'm, I'm gonna give you that, yeah, bro. bro so. But I get what he's saying. But when you see these <laughs> joints for what they really are, they ain't <laughs> shit. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this. The girls, they tell me all they dirty shit. Right, facts. You know what I'm saying? Let's like get to it, man. They tell me all they dirty shit. Uh, a joint might be married, look look great on the gram with the husband, and then you hear her talk, you like what the, the, and look, what all, the all, all you all you what? all you know this. She belongs to the streets. Facts. Okay, see, I ain't <laughs> you a fuck up my man clientele, bro. <laughs> nah, look, listen, he was listen. talking about me on that podcast. <laughs> look, nah, he's talking about his old client. Listen, if it don't apply, let it fly. Hey, Facts, if it bro. don't apply, if right. I'm not talking about you, don't worry about it. <laughs> That's facts, though. If it don't apply. But what what do they say, man? Hit dogs holler. So if somebody getting offended right now, they they, I don't know, care, bro. Bro, they done try to cancel me about five times already. <laughs> I don't care, bro. I don't give a fuck. So I mean, and the thing, the thing about women, we'll go more into this on the late night show. When we had the ladies on here and everything, man. But um, dudes, dudes, dudes are either extremely naive about women. Or they're extremely like, what's the word? Nihilistic. I'm looking for like kind of bitter. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Because like they, most dudes only see one side of women. Either they see the goody goody gun drop side, or they see the complete evil side. It's like you know cheating on a husband, mm-hmm. having side dudes. I've seen both sides of women. Facts. You know, I've seen the beautiful side they can have. You know, as far as like nurturing you, protecting you, spiritually providing when they, for when you, they respect you, when they respect you. But I've also seen, like you said, I got a lot of female wrong side of that fence. Female friends. I use that word lightly because I don't believe in female friends. But <laughs> they they tell me things 
and I'd be like, dog, what the fuck? Oh, nah, he, he, here's one better for you. When you <laughs> when you with that chick and you see like you you know she got a boyfriend and she with you and she's saying, Hey, I gotta call my boyfriend, be quiet, be quiet real quick. That shit messes you up, bro. bro. <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold you, but most dudes don't see that side of it though. Most dudes can't get to that side because you do have to have a certain skill level. And we can get back to the show at that say this point. You gotta have a certain skill level, first of all, to interact with women, to right. get women. Most right. dudes get lost at Oh, she's just so pretty. She's perfect. She's everything. But you don't see when she takes a shit, motherfucker. Like, she's still fucking human. I feel like most like, dudes don't really get, get them like that, bro. They don't. They, they, they don't. From, from, you know what I'm saying? Just from being around women and talking to them and then seeing what niggas DM them and stuff. And I'm like, what? He's... He said that him nigga. You would not be putting these do these chicks on a pedestal Bro. if you know really the, the Man, real shit behind. No. I'm gonna shut the fuck up after this. But yeah. but I have seen like girls that I talk to in the gym, for example, right? And it'd be a nigga that you would never think a million a mil in a million years is doing this shit, but just like constantly hitting them up, like talking to themselves in the DMs. I'm like, yeah. bro, you not you have no dignity, bro. <laughs> Like I'm to a point now. If a joint sneezes wrong, I'm out. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't play no. I don't play no games. You don't respond to me. You'll never hear from my ass again, right, right. ever. But dudes, now they just so thirsty, man. Just like talking to a girl, DMing her four or five times. I'm like, bro, who do you think you are? And the dude that's you that, and if you think you're gonna be that dude, that one percent out of the hundred motherfuckers in her DMs that gets that chance with her motherfucker, bro. Like, nah, it don't work like that. If you hit a chick up on Instagram. The dude that's hitting her up on Instagram is not hitting it. I guarantee you. Facts. Liking her pictures ain't hitting it. I Facts. guarantee you. I'm going to tell you, you, you got to catch her at the grocery store or something. Yeah. I don't know who needs yeah. to hit that, but catch her at the grocery catch store. Catch her while looking at or the church. Uh, the, uh, no, the, the, the deep caffeinated coffee. A lot, of, a lot of the joints that I've, you know what I'm saying, talked to or hit, I wouldn't even follow them, bro, for real, for real. Or like another mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, again, that's that's what real dudes oh, do. Because you ain't going to be in the DMs liking the hard eye and the pictures and stuff, right? bro. Like, <laughs> bro, the Listen, like <laughs> that's real, bro. Like the last few joints I hit, bro, they be like, "What's your answer? I be like, "Man, I don't give a chick my Instagram." You know? I be like, "Nah, like I just don't, I don't give them my shit." Like so, that social media shit just it complicates things, yeah. bro. If you can keep shit all social media, bro. All I'm gonna yeah, tell we, you, we going down a, a dark road right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah we gonna wait for the ladies for that. Yeah, yeah, and I, I'll just say this: the joints that you that that I've hit, you'll never know ever. Facts. And again, that's another that's another kind of free game tip for you fellas. Don't run your mouth. Stop being a hoe. Just don't run your mouth, man. Women, women will give you the game. They'll be so much more open to you when you just keep your fucking mouth shut. That's right. But uh, we'll get back to you, man. Uh, see, Marty. So, did that? Did you purposely start training on women, or that just kind of happened? Like, what? uh, no, it just kind of happened, bro. It just that's yeah. Yeah. I mean, do you feel like they're easier to train, or you like being around them more? What, what, no, women are way harder to train, bro. Hungry. It's not even close. <laughs> uh -huh. But like you know, I've been in the game for a few years, so I kind of, I've had to you know put up with the bullshit attitudes and the you know the bad clients kind of weed themselves out. They do, yeah. And then you just kind of gotta you gotta know what you to expect from women, bro. Because I, since I'm a man, I don't have a period, I don't get pregnant, you know, I don't have no kids. So you gotta be ready for the excuses to where it's like, well, you don't you don't know my body. Da -da -da. You're just a man. Da -da -da. You gotta be ready for all that bullshit. <sighs> That shit don't phase me, bro. Because at the end of the day, like, if you 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 still a big joint, you still a big joint. It's okay. Facts, man. You know, for real, like, it, you either gonna clean your diet up or you not. And if if you ain't been eating clean, you can't blame that on the pregnancy. Your 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 kid is four now, so you've been on bullshit for four years, and you want to blame the pregnancy. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't blame your thyroid either, bitch. Oh, somebody tripping, no, right. bro. I'm a, hey. And I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell her that too. But that's why people love me too, because I keep it on it. Yeah, yeah. Like a lot of dudes, they 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 kind of let you know the women clients walk all yeah. over them and oh, shit. Oh my god, I don't have time bro. for that shit. So, um, uh, the women that can't handle it, they end up leaving. But the ones that really appreciate me. They've been my clients for years, bro. I got, and, I got clients that's been with me for six years. And I was just about to say that. You're going to get long-term clients, exactly. too, because they're going to be like, nah, see, Marty, the only motherfucker that will talk to me, tell me the truth. Yeah. These other motherfuckers like a walk all over, do this. Nah, he's not going to let me do yeah, And people bro. will appreciate you for that. Yeah, bro. I got people that's been with me for years, bro. They, they buying my clothes. They putting their friends on to me. You know, they they just, man, supportive. Like, they, they become family, you know? And you know what? Counterintuitive, oh, counterintuitively, oh, bro, like... um. <laughs> When you're honest with women like that and you're just like 100% blunt, that makes them want you more. And not That's saying right. that you want any of your clients, but I'm pretty sure if you wanted to smash all of them, you probably could. But I'm going to be honest. But even when it comes to getting clients, it's kind of the same shit. That's like right. when you get to the point where it's like, listen, bro, I don't need you. I'm just telling you the truth. You know what I'm saying? If you don't like it, 
that same type of aura, bro, they'd be like, I'm going to this it's, it's You want to know what's crazy, bro? A, a lot of the people that can't handle that shit, majority of them end up coming back. Facts. They end up just, coming back. Just, just like a woman. Just, just like, like a, a woman, woman, bro. It's, it's, all, coming back. it's all. It's all. Con- crazy, it's, it's all connected, bro. Because I'm telling you, like people, <laughs> people who don't need whatever it is, whether it's women or money, are normally rewarded with it. It's yep. just that's just how it is. Yeah. It's, it's it's the it's the game of life. Yep. So it is what it is, bro. So uh, let's get back into the interview, bro. We we can go on for tangent. We can get down when when the ladies come down here talk about all the other stuff, but um. Let's brunch is more crunches. What started that whole movement and how how that idea come to be? So uh, I'm with uh, I'm with the Soul Cycle on U Street one day, and then I went to brunch at uh, Provision 14, which is like you know right across. And this the street. is in Washington D.C. In Washington oh, D.C. Okay. right across the street. Um, I was with my homegirl, and I took a picture of my plate, and I wrote just like randomly. It just came to my head, like even when I joke, I always do like a, like slogans or shit that rhymes. Like I just always been like that. Um, so I just randomly wrote, "Let's brunch is more crunches," and uh, like my, I posted on my story, and my DM started flooding. Like people was like, "Yo, that's tough." Like I like that. Yeah. And one of my friends was like, "Hey, put it on the shirt." So I, I got it on the shirt. I wore it to the gym, and everyone was like, "Yo, is that your brand?" Da, 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 da. People was asking me about it. They was like, "Yeah, hey, I want one. I want to buy one." So, shit. Within two weeks, I had shirts. I was selling out every time I came to the gym. I was selling out shirts. I would even uh, sometimes, I don't know if you saw, ever saw me do this. I would have a table with the shirts and I would be training at the same time. I'd be training and selling shirts. The shit was crazy, bro. You'd be like, yeah, three, yeah, two more. Nah, oh, for yeah, real. Twenty two ninety five. No bullshit, <laughs> bro. No bullshit. And, so. and the good thing about your shirts, man, like I said, I've seen you, bro. Like you went, we've gone from one or two people wearing the shirts to like now I hold gym pretty much. And you, the, material, you can't, the material looks good on them too. I was bro. gonna say you can you can't go a day without seeing somebody in your shit now, bro. And uh, it, it, it really is good material and everything. So uh, man, that's just that's awesome, man. And it's actually really catchy too, and it's good that you even said the less brunches, more crunches thing, because especially being in DC, considering we're like one of the yeah we brunch capitals in the nation, I guess. I love like, brunches out here, so that's awesome, bro. Big facts. Yeah, man. So, where you see yourself in the next five years, see Marty? Which, what do you want to do ultimately? To be honest, man, I don't even know. I just, I just know uh, myself. I know I'm gonna keep elevating, but um, I definitely see myself. You know, maybe having like a facility. Um, part of me, you know, I'm, I might move from the DMV. Uh, might not. Might still be here. Uh, That's where I wanted to go too, bro. Before we even shut that down, talk about this whole LA move and everything that you you went through, bro. Because uh, you weren't here for a little while, man. I think back in 20, 2018, 2019, you took your talents out to LA for a little while. Yeah, so I went to LA in uh, 2019, and. Uh, I pretty much got there. Uh, it was a slow start, you know. Nobody knew who the fuck I was. And you know, L- LA is uh, if you don't have no clout or no status, they don't really give a fuck about you. So yeah, starting from the ground up all over again. You know what I'm saying like I would be it's out there, I'd be out there recording content and people looking like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> like, <laughs> nah, for real, that shit was wild. So um, I started to get some clients. Um, you know, I got, I got, uh, I got put on with Jim Jackson, who is. Uh, Sports broadcaster for Big East, Big Ten, NBA on TNT. I'm sure you've seen him. If you Google him, you probably uh, will recognize him. Um, I trained Karen Kendrick, who's um, she's an actress. She was in the movie Just Mercy Eight with uh, Michael B. Jordan and Jamie Foxx. She played Jamie Foxx's wife in the movie. Um, I trained another another lady. She was the wife of of the guy who makes the music for The Simpsons. So I was pulling up to their mansion. Got money. I already know. Training that. her on the rooftop with the turf. And um, where was that? Uh, in the Palisades. If you don't know where, uh, if you don't know the Palisades is, go there next time you in L.A. All mansions. If they can afford it, I was going to say. You know, I get your ass thrown out if you try to pull up in a Honda. <laughs> Facts. But um, no, it was going real well. I also worked with um, Kevin Hart Supplement Brand. They still send me stuff to this day. But I did some commercials for them and some content for them. And um, everything was going really well, man, until the pandemic hit. <laughs> And a lot of people don't know that the pandemic in LA it probably was the most the strictest city, city as far as the shutdowns. Uh, gyms was closed from March 2020 to March 21. So um, I hit ground zero again. You know what I'm saying? I lost every client, um, had no income. So, you know, I had to, had to humble myself, <laughs> I had to door dash. You know, I was delivering <laughs> wings and pizza. You know what I'm saying? So, 
He's missing Sunday football, missing Friday night NBA, <laughs> delivering delivering food, man. But I had to I mean, do what I had to the do. Lux. But, but I saw you, you even on, on Instagram and stuff. You was training out of garage for a minute, too. Yeah, so uh, so in the midst of door dashing and, you know, collecting unemployment, I had maybe had like three clients. So I was just, you know, grinding, stacking bread, stacking bread, stacking bread, stacking bread. I ended up um, investing in some uh, gym equipment to put in my garage. Um, so I, I was working out there because I couldn't get in the gym. So, you know, my body, I, I was losing my muscles. Shit, I, mean, I was getting fat, skinny fat. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I was go, going to run outside, but that shit really wasn't motivating me because yeah. that's not what I'm accustomed to. So I bought that gym equipment and, um, you know, I was down there. I had it popping. I would bring my Bluetooth down there, be blasting music, lifting, training my some, some of my clients there. And, um, one of the guys from the front desk, he came down. He was like, hey, uh, you're not going to be able to do this. And I was like, what you mean? He was like, you can't do this. I'm like, y'all still want my rent, right? He was like, yeah. <laughs> really? I'm like, I'm like, this is how I make my money. So I'm not going to stop. He was like, all right. I'm just letting you know you can't do it. So I kept doing it. He might have told me like two or three more times. I went down there one day. All that shit was gone, man. They, so I don't know if somebody stole it. or <laughs> Somebody they, got you, bro. I don't Damn. know if the apartment did it. You know what I'm saying? But they, they got me. They was hating on me, hating on my hustle. But uh, and that should be up there, man. Cause you know when the pandemic hit, man, you was looking for equipment, bro. It was like fucking bro. like yeah, iron bro. was like it was like what like uh it was like what like like three like, times a normal price, bro. Yeah, yeah. like three dollars a pound, some shit. You like could get weights for pennies on a dollar before the pandemic, but once that joint hit, yeah, bro. they was hey, everybody was price the prices went up on everything, yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah. On the pandemic, it was yeah, crazy. So they, they and, got me, bro. And they kind of stayed up. They kind of went. They they're not as expensive during the as during the pandemic, but they kind of stayed up. They stayed yeah. up till at least like think still uh, like two dollars yeah, a pound at least. Nigga, we was working out in Oliver's basement during the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Like, like a little bench press and stuff like that. We were work, working out mm -hmm. there, and I did a lot of running. I was running probably about sixty miles a week at that point. Mm -hmm. So I, I had to do something, but like you said, I lost a lot of weight. My muscle definition went down and stuff. I mean, I was just trying to do my best to just stay active, man. But it was a really, really, really bad time. And like you were saying, um, LA people don't know the DMV area is expensive, but LA is a whole different beast. Yeah, man. So you had to really like hustle to like get yeah, your income up during that time, yeah, man. That's hustling, crazy. Bro. I was hustling, but you know, I'm actually thankful for that shit, bro. That shit just, you know. Made me made me even more of a dog than what I already was. So I mean, bro, you you've had so much adversity in your life, man, from the college basketball thing to the LA stuff to not having clients at first. But this is what I want guys to know is that like as long as you keep working, you keep putting the hard work and you stay disciplined and consistent, man, anything is possible. Anything, man. And like I'm really excited to see where you're gonna be in the next four or five years, bro. Because I like I said, I've just seen the way you've taken off just recently, bro. I just know. If you keep going, man, sky's the limit, bro. Yeah, and, and another thing to speak on adversity as well, you know, of course, you know, everything ain't, may not be sunshine and roses, you know, when you keep trying to go. But, like, at the same time, what's the other side of the coin? What are you going to get? You know you failed if you give up. Yep. You know you failed. So, right. it's like, we're not even going to look that way. Yep. Like, regardless of what you got to do, persist through, you know, like you say, you just find a way, man. You find a way to make it. You made it to the end of that lease. When was the end of the lease? And then when did you come start coming back here? The end of that lease was July 21. So, I was back here in August 21. Okay. So I've been back ever since. And what was the decision like for you to come back? Was you like kind of heavily contemplating, don't want to stay out in LA, or you kind of knew nah, like, nah, knew, my lease is up? Nah, I'm, I'm, I knew I'm all back. that shit happened for a reason. So okay. I, I knew I needed to come back and, and get shit popping again. Cause I ain't gonna lie, when you That's left, I, I thought you was never gonna come back. I all thought right. that too. <laughs> I thought that too to that pandemic hit though, but everything happened for a reason. So, so do you think if the pandemic didn't happen, you would have still been out there? Yeah, I probably just, at the rate I was going, I'd have still been out there. Bro. Yeah, because man, he was training celebrities, man. Kevin Hart, Brian, he trained got like the Simpsons. He would have got just got more clients yeah, like, out. I, I would kicked up. Still been out there. In my trip, and I saw you on like a what's that? What's that fucking soap brand? Sasquatch. Doctor Squatch. Yeah, yeah I did. You that. I, did a I, was, too. Yeah. I saw. I saw you on that joint. I was yeah, watching yeah. YouTube, and I was like, "That's see Marty." Yeah, I was on there, bro. <laughs> hey, hey, it's crazy that you said that though about you know how you were building your brand out there. Because, you know, I do believe, you know, how you, you were going in your momentum because it's kind of the same story. Quentin knows her. One of, one of uh, my friends, her father is a celebrity trainer out there. And that's how he kind of built his brand. I know out exactly there. what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. So, so it's just like, you know, we're, we're training Kardashians and stuff. So, it, you know, that's how I, that's how I could have went, you know, but everything happened for a reason. That's why I was talking to you upstairs, you know, perspectives in life. Things happen for a reason, man. Mm -hmm. And honestly, bro, I mean, the sky's the limit. And you know, we love brunches more than LA, man. So, you know, 
Facts. <laughs> we love brunches more than LA. If you want to go back out there, you can eventually. Yeah, man. I can always go back out there. Yeah, man. Ain't going nowhere. Ain't, not, ain't, yeah, not, ain't nothing stopping you, man. But uh, I think this has been awesome, bro. It's been this, completely this awesome. This has been a, a great, great interview. I'm going to save the last word for you, C. Marty, because I want you to plug your Instagram, IG, website, clothing line, and everything like that. Oliver Fortune, what do you think of the show, man? Excellent, excellent, excellent. And one thing that me and C. Marty had actually talked about off camera, and one thing I want to say to the guys is, just because you go, you think you're going to go to LA or Atlanta or Miami, you think all your problems are going to go away. If you're a bum in the city where you at right now, where we at with the internet and all this information, you're going to be a bum over there. At the end of the day, it's about branding. It's about mentality. And it's about, you know what I'm saying? Persistence. If you don't have that where you're at, don't think you're going to go somewhere and it's just going to just suddenly just change because what you see on TV. So hats off to you, man. This is a great episode. I loved it, man. Every single bit of it. Indeed. Oh, facts. Um, yeah, you can find me on YouTube, see Marty Fit, Instagram, see Marty Fit. If you want to cop some gear or you know, you're interested in my training, see martyfit.com. And uh <clears throat> check out the Less Brunches, More Crunches podcast. Um, that's on my YouTube, uh at C Marty Fit. And then I'm on Apple Podcast too. Uh, yeah, Brunches, Brunches. all his links will be down in the description, guys. So make sure you go check them out. D, go ahead and uh, say your last thoughts on the show, bro. Hey, a uh, great show, uh, great information, and you know the young athletes out there. I hope you were listening. Yes. Uh, about you know things that you should do because it, it's different from high school, different life. You got to grow up fast when you go to college. Yes, sir. That's real. That's so, real. see Marty, man. Thank you again for your no time. Bro. Thank you for having me, dog. Um, again, you're welcome on the platform anytime, man. You got to so, come on your podcast next, man. You got to do. Let's get you it, man. Let's, let's so, uh, all right, now here's the question Are you ready for the bullshit? I'm ready, man. Let's Ladies, get it. we already got into some of the bullshit. Okay, all right. So, we got they're going to be mad at me. <laughs> We got some ladies coming up, man. So if y'all see in this episode, the ladies episode might might be out, but either way, it's going to be a good time. And now you get to see TK go off on some joints too. You know how. I do. <laughs> so man, look, that's all our time. To the next time, Shattered Illusions Podcast. We are out of here, man. What's up? Will I take him to the crankiest? Yeah, 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 yeah.